Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. Well, today, Prime Minister Netanyahu will address the UN General Assembly. Uh, the president has already done that last week. And uh, so is the Iranian president, Hanna, uh, Hassan Rouhani. Uh, they had a conversation after that telephone conversation. Evidently, we don't know what of substance that uh, conversation had. Uh, but this is probably, um, with regard to the president and Netanyahu, this is, is probably the their most consequential meeting in their whole time together. <clears throat> and Netanyahu has said, he said before he left Israel, that uh, <clears throat> he said basically, I will speak the truth. Facts must be stated in the face of the sweet talk and the blitz of smiles. There's been a what many have referred to as a charm offensive by the Iranian president. And it's somehow to uh, give people to think that there might be some change in their their pursuit of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's probably not the case. And I think the, the, the government recognizes that, Israeli government recognizes that. And since they do recognize it, they're saying that there has to be a credible military threat. And uh, I think we have to recognize as a result of uh, President Obama's red lines that he put with regard to the chemical weapons being utilized in Syria and his backtracking on that, <clears throat> Russia bailed him out, enabled him to save face at least at this point on it. But recognize his response to Syria, uh, that is probably an indicator of how he will respond to Iran. And uh, <clears throat> Basically, Netanyahu has said, do not be fooled by this man. Do not be fooled by this government. Historically, their actions have been designed primarily to buy time. And he thinks that'll be the case now. So don't be deceived. And as I've heard these comments made back and forth, I was reminded of Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse, verse 1, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him, calling his attention to its buildings, beautiful architecture, uh, magnificent architecture. <clears throat> Do you see all these things, Jesus said? I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left upon another. Every one will be thrown down. And the disciples said, well, tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? What will these things be? When will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus makes a noteworthy, remarkable statement. He doesn't even answer the question, really. But he does give a priority statement for God's people to follow until he comes again. This is basically what he said. <clears throat> Jesus answered, watch out, take care, be attentive, be attentive that no one deceive you, that no one deceive you. Why did he say that? He said that because the institutions of man worldwide, regardless of the country, are pervasive with deceit. I don't care whether it's politicians, parties, unions, religions. They're all contaminated with deceit. And Jesus has said, you be, watch out that you, no one deceives you. Uh, that's a strong statement. And he says, he goes on to say, he says, uh, such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So we're in living in the age of deceit. So we need to be aware of that and take necessary precautions. And what is a necessary precautions? How do you com combat deceit? I know of no other uh, means by which we can do that than through God's word. This is truth. 
Your word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is truth. And this will keep us from being deceived in the days of hell. It's all about us wherever we are, but we can recognize it for what it is if we screen everything through God's word. The next week, Od Ki Yavo Shilo, or until Messiah comes, Yavareka Yahweh. God bless you. <laughs>